Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. It is good to be back. Unfortunately, I've only got uh, two replays that I'm able to do today. So this will be two days of games, and I'll, I'll be uploading what I can as I get it. Upper right-hand corner, we have Ninpo as the yellow Zerg 6 o'clock location. We have Supperman as the purple Protoss from the illustrious clan Urk. Really good players in Urk. Looks like that Overlord is going to get initial scout on his opponent. I have not seen Nimpo play before. I have seen Suppermen around here and there. Although, I think this might be his first BSL performance. I'm trying to recall if I saw him in the Broodwork Clan Leagues. By the way, check out Revolution Veer, who quite often will be casting uh, the Clan Leagues. Probe, going to grab some resources which sometimes means we're going to see a gateway first, but sometimes can mean we're going to see a forge drop. Or maybe even a... I wonder if he's even going to risk with this little bit of mineral grab a 12 Nexus, of all things, against Zerg. Haven't seen that in quite some time. Regardless, he does need to be wary as that Overlord making its way that direction. We are seeing an Overlord Overpool. So, initial aggressive Zerglings. So, Supperman, sooner rather than later, is going to need to get that forge down or something to counter this. The probe going for another round of minerals back to the base. And this is going to make critical seconds where we don't have any sort of form of defense, potentially gateway or forge on the front. And on top of that, this, this overlord is going to be able to sweep in and provide timing. Oh yeah, no, he's going for it. This is a 12 Nexus. Here I was uh, just memeing a little bit. No, this is going to be a 12 Nexus on the three player map. Drones are actually... So this is the drone scout, and this is going to be Zerglings in his opponent's face, depending on how many get constructed here. So hatchery down. There are hundred, there are resources to build a Zergling. Forge out on the front. This could be really dangerous. However, additional Zerglings are not being constructed. It's just the two. So the oh, And the Overlord holding up short. So Supperman looks like he might be able to pull it off. Simply because the drone not able to scoot down and get the confirming information. A gateway being dropped behind this now. So, if Zerglings had been constructed here, that would have been game. And even now, it's potentially where we could see some Zerglings sneak through. But Nimpo, Nimpo going to back out. So, Supperman's going to pull one here. And this is going to... and. I don't know that Nimpo is going to realize how fast this Nexus is unless he moves that Overlord across position. So anyway, the probe making its way around. Still no scout from Supperman in his opponent's base, at the very least. So that's at least going for him. Extractor coming up at the 310 mark. Comes out a little bit later with the Overpool. I'm actually shocked that he went Overpool and did not produce. I guess he just wanted to play it defensively to make sure he got that hatchery down. Probe making its way up, but getting rejected. We do have a drone out to go ahead and potentially grab a third hatchery. Seven X score warping in that corner. Probe just blocking the gas. We don't even, see, or blocking the forward gate. We don't even have a Zealot out yet. So first Zealot being constructed. So Supperman up four workers and in, in a pretty strong economic position. There's third base being grabbed in that upper left. Overlord hanging out front is seeing the lack of troops, but right now Nimpo just playing very, very defensively is not built anything past the initial two Zerglings. And actually supply blocking himself a little bit right here, which is painful. Additional drones being constructed to saturate, especially when he was already behind. So huge worker lead now. Second gas being grabbed for Supperman. So he can go ahead and either opt to do the double stargate to get air control. Could go for some DT play behind this. We will see. Probe still alive and able to check and confirm the worker count at that natural expansion to take a guess as far as whether this is 973 or not. Looks like the Spire being dropped. Third hatchery, however, not yet online. Zergling speed being upgraded. Now a handful of Zerglings also being produced. Zealot count a little bit low. Plus one weapons just being started. We do see plus one weapons, but no second Stargate. 
So Supperman does want to go for potential air control, but wants to keep it a little bit lighter on the initial Corsair count. One thing Supperman has not done is, is he's not dropped additional gateways here and is playing more for a quick third base style here as the troop count is a little bit low. He hasn't pushed up any aggression, maybe feeling that out of that 12 Nexus, he has a strong enough economy. He doesn't have to worry about it. Nimpo has caught up in the overall drone count and decent saturation and a fourth hatchery being dropped. So I believe this is going to transition. We'll see if this is either going to be four to six hatch muta or if this is going to be a transition back to the Hydrolston after the initial scourge. First Corsair in production, Citadel of Adun. So it looks like we are going to see more Dark Templar style play. <clears throat> no defensive cannon as of yet, as that Spire finishes. The first Corsair confirming all the tech. And let's see, it is just going to be Scourge. And there's the fifth hatchery. I would not be shocked to see. Now, here's the thing Zerg can transition and play five hatch Muta and just try to play air control and macro up behind it. Or they can go ahead and drop that Hydral's Den, go for some contain play, second gas being grabbed. So I think this is going to be more airplay. I'm actually shocked with this that that gas wasn't grabbed uh, much earlier. So yeah, it looks like it is going to be six hatch Mutalisk, which does require air control. And Supperman just about to finish plus one weapons. The Corsair count pretty sizable. He's got a good supply lead, a huge worker lead. And with three Corsairs that have not been touched out on the field, two more Corsair out there and could shred absolutely everything. Zelt leg speed being upgraded. We don't see a Citadel of a Dune being plopped down. So we could potentially see that, I think it's around nine minutes, the Corsair DT timing attack. Plus one weapons finishing up. Mutalisks making their way towards that natural expansion. But they're going to be facing... Plus one weapons, four Corsair, and some cannons in the way. The Zealots hiding out to that left-hand corner. Mutalis moving in, able to get good amount of probes here before Supperman reacting. I'm not sure what the lag was like in here. Now the Corsair engaging, the Scourge pushing in, able to get one Corsair. Some nice micro. The rest of the Scourge quickly being taken care of. The Zealots now speeding out. They want to go ahead and take a shot somewhere out here. Hydrosten being plopped towards the front for Nimpo. Wants to go ahead and seal himself in. And the Zealots, let's see if they continue towards that natural or if they shift directions towards this upper left. Big Sim City here as well and Double Sunken Colonies being dropped at that location as well. Supperman with that plus one weapons opting to hold short, wipe out Overlords. This is where would have loved to see Dark Templar. The Scourge chasing those Corsair away. The Zealots exposed now to those Mutalisks. The Mutalisks, however, missing them initially, now swinging back around. A couple ga more additional gateways have been planted. The Corsair count is dangerously high for this side. However, the Zealots eating some free damage, and I don't know that they're going to get a lot accomplished here in the upper left. So Supperman eating some sizable damage. Oh, let's see if the Corsair able to or take an another massive amount of hits. Splitting off, it looks like they want to go ahead and work on the Overlords up here. However, a lot of Hydra is spawning upper left. And I think Nimpo has bought himself the time he was looking for with the early air game to go ahead and make that mass transition. Some Zealots now peeling up. It looks like they are going to be able to take out that Sunken Colony, but the Hydralisks completing. So the rest of the Corsair being overkilled right now and huge waves Observer attack forces out. Dark Templar also being caught, unfortunately, as well. And I feel like if that attack was a little bit more coordinated a little bit earlier, this could have worked out a little bit better for Supperman. Now supply counts are even, which are actually Nimpo's ahead in the overall supply count, which means he has the lead. Huge amount of Hydralisks out. Does have that Evo Chamber down, working with plus one weapons. And now Supperman, with a very light attack grouping on his front door, needs to be concerned about how he's going to secure his third. Additional gateways plopping down. High Templar being constructed. He's going to need Psy Storm and a lot else. I don't know that Lurker Tech... Looks like Lurker Tech has been upgraded. 
So Nimpo could follow this up with a very strong Lurker contain. 48 drones and grabbing that interior 12 o'clock location as well. A single Zealot has managed to sneak out. Just a light grouping of troops towards the front to go ahead and spot anything that might have been making its way out. Mulos may be hoping to hunt down some High Templar, the Corsair that are remaining, escorting them out. And I think those are reconstructed Corsair. Supperman in a bit of trouble here because the other angle of this as well is he doesn't know whether they're... So he doesn't know whether there's going to be lurkers, nor does he know whether there's going to be a overwhelming error transition because oftentimes what Zerg can do in this situation where they have their opponent in the dark is do a quick air switch, especially with the light Corsair count. However, Lurker's starting to group up. Don't see observers out in the front, so it is going to come down to Sidestorm. However, the Lurker is not yet burrowed for Nimpo. Now moving up and burrowing. Decently bunched up towards the front, but that's going to send Sepperman back behind his natural. Looking to see if there's a robotics facility anywhere back here. No robo as of yet. The robo just constructing at that natural. And this is a lot of time for Nimpo to... First of all, saturate this interior 12 and also complete the seal around Supperman's natural expansion. Just build additional lurkers. He's already got two control groups and a third control group of Hydalisks making their way that direction. Some overlords are exposed. It looks like they are slow walking it though. So no overlord speed as of yet. Looks like that's just starting. That is going to put Nimpo in the red and another overlord potentially exposed. And that could be huge because first of all, Dark Templar could make their way out. Looks like the gateway is opened up. The Hydalisk trying to pour through eating some side storm and being repelled otherwise. A Zealot able to at least find that attribute of the interior 12. They don't know that he's going to get a lot else out of it. But it's critical the Overlords get down here as well, because otherwise some Dark Templar might be able to sneak out, although I don't see any Dark Templar in construction as of yet. Nimpo actually bleeding a lot of Overlords here to those latent two Corsair that were out in the field. And as a result, still in the red. Feels like he's been in the red for a good minute. Now finally overproducing Overlords. Supperman trying to walk out. Again, no observer coverage and eat, getting obliterated by that attack grouping. Robotics facility is down. There's the observatory as well. So this is going to be the first observer. Things being opened up. It could be that Supperman actually took down his own gateway. Wish I'd kept an eye on that. Big side storm over the Hydralisks. Softening them up. Now working on that forge. Which actually might be doing Supperman a favor giving him a better area of attack to work with. Might have just uh, wanted to leave that, actually, for his opponent. Some more Lurkers being built. Nimpo still with the overall supply lead. However, it looks like the upgrade lead significantly in Sepperman's favor. So it is possible with some decent size storm, he could swing this rather rapidly. But he needs to have these size storms be absolutely brilliant. Otherwise... Could be disastrous. Corsair finally getting wiped out. Big grouping. Speed is there. The Hydralis now starting to press forward. But very bunched up. Big side storm catching all sorts of units here. The Observer towards the rear. The Lurker is just getting obliterated there. And now it's an opportunity. So maybe Nimpo overstepping here. And creating opportunity for his opponent to sneak out. But more Hydralis pouring their way across. It looks like it is not enough units for Suffermen. And the Psy Storms not doing enough. So gonna call GG right there. Getting overwhelmed. Game goes to Nimpo. I believe we'll have to see whether he advances to the next round or not. Hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. Thank you for listening.